Hi people and welcome back. I think what I'm going to do today is going to be really interesting and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and that's talk about coincidences. The odd case of 9-11 being mentioned in the Matrix and things like that. What does it really mean and how do we really understand those kind of messages? So the reason I'm doing it today is a number of you viewers have sent me this and this is a book written in 1981 about an emergent corona style flu epidemic virus that came out of the city of Wuhan and caused a world pandemic. Written in 1981. Wow, amazing. So, what does it mean? Well, it means whoever wrote it in 1981 really had a good prediction for the future and understood about viruses and understood about pandemics and did good research knowing that there is a biolab in the city of Wuhan. And it kind of makes all make sense. And here's another one. In the film The Matrix, the main character, when we saw his passport, 9-11-2001. This film was made many years before 9-11. It was a strange reference. And even stranger, in the very conspiratorial film Enemy of the State, beautifully directed by Tony Scott, in fact one of my favourite films of all time, there is another reference to 9-1-1. The two classic examples which are often cited are this uh, Chris Carter series called The Lone Gunman. That was made in March before the September attack on the World Trade Center. And it's about an airliner that's going to crash into the World Trade Center. Amazingly, that originated in Boston. And it's often cited as the most incredible conspiratorial prediction of what was going to happen. And a Jackie Kahn film, which is often cited, he was going to do a film about blowing up the World Trade Center and was hired to film it, wait for this, on September the 11th, on the day the planes hit the towers. He obviously didn't do the project. He rejected the script as being a bit too fanciful. But both those Lone Gunman and the Jackie Kahn films point to something which I think people don't talk about. Well, I think it's really kind of complicated. I think there's this thing called fluke. And that is where we as humans look for coincidences. You walk down the street and you see somebody with red trousers and a blue shirt, followed by somebody with blue trousers and a red shirt. You think, whoa, a glitch in the matrix, man. And yeah, because... That is how we work. We're looking for those kind of glitches as a human. And I have this hilarious but quite revealing personal story. So I'm just about old enough to remember the 1960s. Not quite. I was only a child. But I remember Joni Mitchell. And she had this big hit, which you'll know, called Big Yellow Taxi. And it was, you know, a very good song with the memorable words, you don't know what you've lost till it's gone. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. You know, it, it, incredible, easy to remember, take home message, poignant. And as a young child, that really kind of hurt me. And I felt that paving paradise and putting up a parking lot was horrible. So, scroll forward a million years until I, I'm an old person and you would hear Big Yellow Taxi, Joni Mitchell, Golden Oldies. But once a year you'd turn on the radio and there would be, you don't know what you've lost till it's gone. They pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you would hear it. Yeah, once a year or something like that. But then... This happened. So I was working in London and commuting to work in my car with a radio around about 2014. And I would blurry eyes, get up, 
get into traffic, turn on the radio, and it would be, you don't know what you've lost till it's gone. What, what, pave paradise? What, 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 okay, all right. And I'll go to work. Next morning, I get in. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. They pay for I was going, no, 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 this is ridiculous. Every single time I got on the car, they was playing the now years old Joni Mitchell song. So I started thinking, as humans do, as we all do, it's a message. What is the song trying to tell me? What don't I know that... I'm going to lose till it's gone, or I don't think I'm going to pave paradise, but there's some message there. So this is what happened. Most people in TV are much younger than me. I was probably in my 40s at the time, and everybody was in their 20s. And I mentioned this story to a young woman who was working in the place, the TV company I was working at, and I said, it's really weird. I'm getting this subliminal message from Joni Mitchell about paving paradise. And I hear it on the radio every day. It's like something's going on. And she laughed and laughed and laughed and said, no, no, no. Simon, it's number one in the hit parade. It's a cover version done by, I don't know, I'm making this up, Rihanna or somebody like that who amazingly sounded a lot like Johnny Mitchell. And the reason I was hearing it every day, every time I got in the car, is it was number one record and the radio stations were playing it. No conspiracy. But that is how our brain works. We're looking for connections. So that's probably enough for today because I'd like to do a follow-up to this about film and movie making and how attention to detail and how the number 911, 9-11 is often used and how we add Easter eggs to movies and how odd little things can be put into films that basically manipulate you for the right intention of the filmmaker to make you understand the scene. The choice of music, the choice of sound effects, the choice of weird things like dates on passports and things. It's all carefully chosen. So that will be part two because the truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.